there's a lot of people in this world right now that are actually looking for some people they can relate to as much as people they aspire to. Hello, hustlers, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business owners, everybody out there trying to turn an idea into income. I want to welcome you to Serious Business because it's serious, but it's not all that serious. Welcome to your weekly spot to get everything you need to know about making your business more profitable, but also having a lot more fun while doing it, because if this ain't fun, you shouldn't be doing it. Hey there, everybody, and we are here with Serious Business, and Melanie Orr has decided to join me today, mainly because we can't get rid of her. That's right. It's hard to fire your wife. Hard to fire your wife. Yep. Here I am. (laughs) Um, So I made a post. We're going to talk about something that I am sure we could, if we opened the phone lines up on this podcast, people would have so many opinions and so many people would want to coach me to the truth and tell me what they think. And that's the fun part of this. So hopefully we'll get a interesting conversation going on in your, in your head and in your mind. And I made a post, I don't know, a couple weeks ago Mm -hmm. that I just, I find social media such a burden sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'll be the first to admit I wrote that and thought, oh my God, I'm, ancient, right? Am I getting old? Because most people, it's just natural to them. I mean, when I look at our son and how he interacts with an iPhone or an iPad and how he will, what was it the other day that he just could figure out how to do? And we were like, it's so crazy. How does he even know how to do that? Skipping ads on YouTube yeah, like or skipping something. Ads on YouTube I, I don't know. Two but years yeah. old. And it's, I know it's just a part of the communication style for a certain generation, but here's my problem with it. It's all one big fat lie. It is 90% lie. And so what's going on, in my very humble opinion, is that we have created a communication style that is... We're, we're, we're okay. Let me back up. We back are behaving. It up. Back it up. We are behaving as if this is a natural, honest communication style, and we're just connecting the world. Zuckerberg's just connecting the world, and we're look how we're connected to each other. When in fact, he's just created the largest marketing platform in the world. And Seth Godin said it best: "All marketers are liars." And uh, I think he changed the name of that book later because he, he's such a nice guy. But it's true. And so now every... Did he? He changed the name of the book? Yeah. They, I'll look it up while you're talking. But he a few years later, he came out with a new version of it and it was a different name. Huh. But my point is, is that, oh, gosh, you know, it, I'm all for marketing. You know, I love to market and I love sales. And, and I love how you turn an idea or a concept or a pain or a problem into a story and into an opportunity and you inspire people to take action. But sometimes uh, the social media piece, because it's taking everything in your personal life and having to, on some level, do that with it. Because I'm telling you, not everybody is running through fields of flowers with yellow sundresses on, right? It's just not true. They're not. I mean, you know, I love some social media, so... Um, I don't know. I mean, I agree with you. I think there is a burden to it. And I really do admire those who have curated this persona through social media and what you can do with it. I appreciate it from the academic place of creating this and utilizing it. But my point is, is that do we really think the world is that dumb. Everybody that you're following right now that is a that is marketing to you, they're they're in photo shoots and everything is staged. We sold our home to an Instagram star. We did. We sold our home to an mm-hmm. Instagram star. She's standing on the counter of the kitchen that I built making Not cookies. Standing, she's sitting. She's squatting. Squatting on the counter of the kitchen uh-huh. counter that I picked out and built baking cookies do you think once did i ever get on the counter and squat and bake cookies in my house maybe that's what's wrong with your life suzanne you didn't sit on a counter and squat down and make cookies okay 
But you get my point. It's all made up. I do. I do. And I think that there is a... Yeah. I mean, social media is an interesting thing. And I was thinking about how I'm really glad that I didn't grow up with it. But and I'm curious to see what this does to our son and our children and futures. But I almost feel like there's been an interesting backlash. And I don't know whether it's just our age or there's we're kind of cycling into a new era and what that's going to look like. But I do think that it was all this, you know, glittery glitz of excitement around what social media was and and how you know a nobody could get their name out there and catapult themselves into I guess what we would consider stardom you know you know I'm a big Kardashians fan so I'm gonna use them but you know taking social media and kind of catapulting themselves into that but I do think I've seen a lot of businesses and people kind of taking a step back and kind of reevaluating the amount of information that's out there because it is all consuming. If you follow what all the Instagram experts and social media experts tell you, I mean, there's a lot of content that you have to be curating and putting out there every day. And that can be Nobody even lives a life that big that you can curate that much content. Yeah. So it you has know, to be manual. Wait, I, I want to read this. Okay. We're ta- I started with Seth Godin and his book, All Marketers Are Liars. And I, I really do think that it came out with another edition that was a different name. But anyway, but here's the background and the inspiration for that book. Godin said the inspiration came to him when he watched the Democrats lose the election in 2004. He stated that although both candidates told lies, the candidate that won told the more believable lie. In particular, he noticed Karl Rove's ability to tell a story, noting that he's a very good liar. Is there any truth left? That's my question. And I think social media really... uh, Listen, don't think this is a, a... uh, episode about not liking social media. You know what I love about social media? Well, don't worry, because I'm not going to let you hate on it too much, because you know I love it. No, I, but I love the platform it gives. I love the platform it gives for people to get a message out about something. I love the platform it gives for people to connect. I love the platform it gives for me to get a, you know, to to simply position myself as an expert and do what I do and get clients and customers and people to follow me. But it does cause you to pause and sometimes when I even look at my colleagues Mm -hmm. when I look at my colleagues and see that there is photo shoot after photo shoot after photo shoot of curated contrived made up scenarios of situations going on and I'm like people let's get real I run a six million dollar company I've worked my ass off the last 12 years I have a grand life and a beautiful life and I do interesting things but most of the time I am in a pair of leggings (laughs) and a sweatshirt just trying to get shit done and Nobody wants to see a photo shoot of an obese woman in a sweatshirt just trying to get things done. But that's the reality. I mean, maybe you should post that. I think that's a really funny post. (laughs) But, you know, here's the thing that's interesting is I think that people forget the 80-20 rule, right? They forget that 80% of what most successful businesses do does not work. 20% is what makes them the money. And... I sometimes wonder, I'm like, what if we just stopped doing the 80%? But I guess somehow it would all get, you know, messed up and skewed. But I think people put too much emphasis on what social media can do because for some people it works. Oh it my, works it, what do you mean for some people it works? It works for everybody. Yeah. That's not my point. My This yeah. is not a conversation on does it work. It works. That's like, you know, saying does, do, do t, you know, do commercials work? Of course they work. Again, you know, the TV on the other day with my almost three-year-old watching TV and we were just on vacation trying to pack bags what was on, those commercials started coming on. He, I didn't even tell you about this, Melanie, because you weren't in the room. Got obsessed with Lucky Charms. Oh, my God. I did hear this. I was walking out of the room and I saw Lucky, it. A Lucky thought, Charms commercial. He, the kid has never seen. Look, kid has never eaten cereal in his life except for some Cheerios, Cheerios. out of a yeah, Ziploc yeah. bag, right, as a snack. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, how do you get that? And I said, what do you mean, how do you get that? And he goes, 
Detarms, Detarms. <laughs> and I said, and I looked up and I was like, Lucky uh, Charms? And he's like, Yes, they're delicious. <laughs> right? <laughs> advertising works. And I'm not against advertising. Uh, I love advertising. This conversation for me is about aren't we exhausted? We get it on TV, we're getting it through email. It's like, is social media exhausting us yeah. from any truth that's left? And as a business owner and as a marketer and as an in, quote unquote, I guess I'm an influencer. I've influenced you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. One person as an influencer, what is my moral obligation to tell a truthful story? Right. What is my moral obligation to not have everything that I put out in the world, a photo shoot on a beach in Bali. And I went there for four days, but now it looks like that all I do is live a tropical life. It, I don't know. I like truth. I love the ugly, raw, dirty truth. And I'm, I guess in the minority now. No, I don't think that you are. I mean, I think there's something about that. And like I said, I do see people taking a step back. And uh, I think that people are quieter because they don't, because they think that's what people want to see is the lifestyle shoot and Bali. And that's what their whole life is. Bali. Bali. Bally. 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 I think Bally is a fitness, Bally's women's gym, who yeah. I actually met. Or a uh, casino. Family that owns. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I don't think that you're, you're wrong. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I think that people are pausing and they're looking and they're going, well, what, who am I? I'm not going to, you know, drive around and I, I don't drive around a f Ferrari and well, wear Prada shoes all day Can long. Can you imagine having to get in and out of a Ferrari no. all day? No, you know, a Corvette was hard enough. It's like laying down on your back. I can't. Your dad had a Corvette. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like those people. We we were just somewhere. Doesn't matter where we were. And it was a very outdoorsy nature situation. And these two people showed up and they looked like they had just walked out of a girls episode. Like they were super hip, like straight out of Williamsburg, Brooklyn, hipster, you know, the uh, pocket chain, the gold pocket chain and these slick shoes and this perfect sundress. And I, I don't know, it looked like they had just come there to do a social media shoot in nature that didn't make any sense. No one else is dressed that way. Everyone else is like, in, you know, athletic shoes and jackets and whatever sweatshirts but here this couple came and then uh they did drive away in a very tiny sports car it was really funny but anyway i, I got off on a tangent that about was that crazy yeah, i don't tangent. even know what i was talking about but um so yeah you're right yeah. So I'm just, I'm just saying, where's the truth and how much is left and is anybody else missing it as much as I am? And my favorite, you, you know, I actually, we were running a Facebook ad this week and it popped up and I, I'm not really paying attention because I wasn't working the week I saw it and I had a bunch of back fat. Does anybody know what back fat is? Not now, fat back. Not, not the fat stuff back. that you In cook the South, butter we're from beans the South. with or green now beans. You cook, you cook butter beans and green beans with fat back, but this is back fat, which just means it is not your most flattering picture of your back. And there was a crazy picture, and I, I didn't tell you this, Melanie, but Gary, who runs our ads, he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I took it down. I know it wasn't approved and you guys were gone. And he said it was their best performing ad. Now, I, yeah, because I don't think it was about you. It was about Adrian in the picture. No, maybe it wasn't about me. But I also think <laughs> sometimes a real you. shot, something that looks like yeah. a real shot that has imperfections. Yeah. Because it was a real shot. Adrian and I were playing on it stage. Was and it, it was real. It was real. For real. It was for real. Reels. Real. Yeah. Reels. Is interesting. And so I just think that there can be a fatigue. With, and I'm not talking about the fatigue of social media where people are like, I'm spending too much time on it. Because, yeah, I mean, everybody can get down a rabbit hole and you can scroll for too long. But I'm talking about like, oh, man, I feel like it was like we've lost the one last place to kind of be ourselves. It's one of the reasons I love speaking, right? In-person speaking. You cannot manipulate that shit. You can't manipulate it. You can't get filters and flowers and backgrounds and backdrops and editors. You got to show up on stage and you are good or you're not. You're talented or you're not. You are, it is what it is. And I think, and listen, my background is theater. 
Well, I don't see, know this, if you knew this that. is exactly where I was going to go. My background is theater. Keep going. I am a thespian, a theatrical human, a theatrical human. But yours the is theater. Too. The theater. Both of us have a background in theater, and that shit is real. That is real, and you get it right or you get it wrong. Well, well. So here's what I was going to say. I was going to challenge you a little bit, and kind of your thinking challenge about me. the I the last bit of truth, and where is it? I can't. Where be for, challenged. Where for art thou, truth? Where for art thou? And I was going to say, you, you know, I mean, we do talk. Okay, that's so obnoxious for everyone who's listening. She's sucking down her drink through a straw and just I just wanted to be obnoxious. Um, you know, I mean, we do say that all business is show business. So Absolutely. So it's it's a confusing thing to say, like be yourself in the last kernel of truth, but then show business, because show business has it, it alludes to a little bit of pizzazz. And so I do think what people have gotten. Give them the old razzle dazzle, razzle dazzle them. No, da, I, da, I get da, that da. part. So, but, but, I th- but I think people ahead. have gone too far with adding a little bit of pizzazz. There's razzle dazzle. Uh-huh. There's razzle dazzle. And there's and- I'm a fucking liar. <laughs> Right. And that's the problem with business right now is yeah. anybody who can get a good photographer you know, and a good video team and can spend a little bit of money who has never helped anybody yeah. in their life. All right. Doesn't have any business. You get, listen. you listen. know where I am. You know where I am I going like, with this. I feel like we've talked in circles and now here I am. I'm feeling it right now. And here's what I have to say. Here's the thing that pisses me off about social media and the lies. There are a lot of broke ass motherfuckers out there who are sitting in rented. Mercedes <laughs> cars with the top down acting like they're making a shit ton of money and telling people that they can help them make a million dollars. And I know damn well, they can't even pay me for the services that they have purchased. And that type of bullshit makes me really annoyed. There's one thing to kind I will, of I will inflate share. your I personal will brand. People. I will inspire people and say, I have built a multi multiple million dollar business and I've never once done a photo shoot on my car. I do mm. think we've had a couple of videos of me getting in and we out have. of the car just because I was in the car, but I've never done Facebook ads of me sitting in one of my nice cars. As a matter of fact, I have a re I have the most expensive car I've ever owned in my life right now. And I would like someone to buy it from me. So funny. I was I just talking about that the other day. It. I hate my car. You yeah. have a really nice car right now. We we don't bought fancy cars. Yeah. Oh, uh, like what a year ago, six, not nine, even, not, not even. even. We both hate them. Yeah, we I'm, do, I'm about to get me a Subaru Outback. People, <laughs> <laughs> she is. Listen, good for you. You do that. You do. You live your best life. I'm gonna live my you best live it, life. and you live it with truth, and you live it loud. But but, but, but my point is, yes, I think that I think taking your brand and your message mm-hmm. and showbizing that message is one thing. It's it really important because people yeah. want to be entertained. People they do. Want to, it, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, is like the, the thing that feeds this, you know, I mean, people wouldn't be successful if it didn't tap into something is that people want to be entertained. People want to, I, I people say that they hate envying people or wanting things or coveting it, but I don't think that's the truth. I think it's how humans thrive, unfortunately. Oh, and social media is the playground and for social... wishing you had somebody else's life. Yeah. Let me say that again. Social media is the playground for wishing you had somebody else's life. And so for me, that's where I struggle because, and listen, I have photo shoots. I have a stylist that comes here once a month and drops off clothes and I do all those things because I have a brand and I want to look my best and I want to do that but I also but it's important to say I can't clothe myself I have to hire someone (laughs) to do this (laughs) I can't clothe myself I'm pretty good at that but I think it's important to recognize that if you are out there building a brand and a business to recognize that a a lot of what you're seeing is manufactured. So Mm. take a breath Mm -hmm. and it's okay where you are and who you are. I also think if you're out there and you're building a business and you're just starting out, start from where you are, start from telling great stories. Yeah. Start from using your life experience because your life experience has value, value and you don't have to make stuff up and manufacture it for people to be interested in you. I didn't. 
I started out and certainly I tried to exploit everything that I had done up until that time in my life for the betterment of a great story and to get attention and for people to pay attention to my brand. But I would go out on a limb here to say that there's a lot of people in this world right now that are actually looking for some people they can relate to as much as people they aspire to. Yeah. Right. Relatability can Amen. be just as important as being uh, aspiring to be someone or be like someone. So I, yeah, I know we talked a little bit in a circle about this, but it's been on my mind a lot because sometimes I do just step back and go, Oh, I feel guilty that I'm not posting every little thing. And I feel guilty that I'm not drinking pina coladas on the beach and getting professional photographers to capture it. But I also think live your life. Yeah. And I think if you live a, Fun, fascinating, honest, caring, giving, uh, crazy, wacky life. People will watch. Yeah. And you don't have to make it all up. So this is serious business. Serious business. It's not all that serious, nope. um, but it is. And so here's what I want to inspire everybody to do today. Go out and do a post on social media, but make it the rawest, realest post that you can about something you're really struggling with or something you're really excited about or something that's really happening and you don't need a glam team to do it, right? You don't need a glam squad to do it and you don't need to be perfect to do it. Just tell your best story. People love a good story and it doesn't have to be made up. It just needs to be entertaining. All right, we'll see you at the next one. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast, Serious Business. Please follow us on Instagram at The Driven Inc. And make sure to check us out on Facebook at Driven Inc. as well. Subscribe to this podcast. You don't want to miss a single episode. And tell a friend because good friends share good stuff. See you next week.